do you need a website for your composing career? Let's talk about it. Most young composers ask the question, do I need a website to build a successful music career? And I think the short answer is yes, but more importantly, we need to understand why a website matters. And if you're going to build one, what actually needs to be on your website to make sure that it's actually benefiting you and building your career instead of being a distraction. So a website really serves one core purpose, and that is to be a place that is a funnel for anyone that is going to work with you. So as a composer, we often approach our craft more as an art and less as a business. And if you do that, you're just not gonna get sales. And so ultimately you have to come from the angle of, is this a product or is this a service? And if you've seen my video on the 80-20 principle and how that applies to composers, then you'll understand my vantage point that I believe 80% of our time as composers should be spent making products. So that's anything from music and music libraries to courses, to YouTube videos, to podcast episodes, and anything that can generate income down the line and bring in more revenue. And so I'm a firm believer of using a website as both a funnel for services to get more custom composing gigs, but also for the products to be able to actually sell the products themselves or to connect to the websites where I have those products being sold. And so ultimately the website for you is going to be slightly different than anyone else because you are unique and you're gonna have your own particular products, your own particular services, and what pertains best to you and your music business. But there are a few items that every single website should have and if you don't have these, then you're really going to be doing yourself a huge disservice because we live in a world that is so technologically advanced and expectant that you're gonna have a website. And so what I wanna do is take a look at my website as a demo, just to kind of show you the items that I have chosen to put on there and how you can do the same. And the idea here is that you can walk away after this video encouraged to create your own website if you haven't yet. And if you have, perhaps you just need to clean it up a bit to actually make it more friendly for potential clients down the line. So my website, stephenmalin.com, the first thing you'll notice at the very top left-hand corner is that there is a little lock here. And it's an HTTPS, not an HTTP web address. So first things first, if you do not have an SSL certification, which is a security certification for your website, then you are automatically going to be punished by Google. So when people search for your name, you are losing out on rank results. People don't wanna to go to a website if it's not secure. And Google has gone to great lengths to make sure that you are not rewarded you do not have that luck. So that SSL certificate, you can purchase that through any major uh, web hosting service. Um, I have built my website directly through squarespace.com and they actually provide an SSL security certification for an entire year whenever you renew your domain name through them. And it's an inexpensive service um, versus some, some of these others that will actually charge you on top of the normal web hosting. So I'm a big fan of Squarespace and this entire website was created through them. So I'm not affiliated with Squarespace, but I do strongly believe in their services. I think it, it's just an easy way to make a website. So the most important portion of a website is actually this button right here, the contact button. So usually, traditionally, contact is in the top right-hand corner. In my case, because I actually have a lot of other products and services in addition to what you see in the, the top header. I have a little more tab that you can go in and check those things out. But contact is always in that top right hand corner and that's uh, important to put that there because that's how people are actually going to get in contact with you and communication with you if they want to hire you for whatever. 
your service or product is. So you'll notice right off the bat that I do not start with anything about me. So the meet Steven portion is actually the second section because traditionally when someone goes to your website, it's because they have searched for you on Google or they have come from another source such as YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, a podcast episode, a blog article, something got them to your site or even just a word of mouth. And so they already sort of know who you are, so you don't have to tell them right off the bat. Instead, you need to show them why they should hire you. And so a demo reel, if you have one, this is the best place to put it. Now, I am a big fan of visuals, and so whenever I have a demo reel, I like to show instead of tell what I do. So for example, right here, it's a TV music demo reel. Starts off with music, it has me conducting, it has a cool quote, starts going through big names. So it's very evocative, very much in your face. It's just a YouTube video there. And because of this player, you can scroll between film music, advertising music, video game music, and some retro video game music. Now this might be considered overkill. Uh, one video is plenty. Um, a SoundCloud playlist is okay, but it's really not the best possible way to grab someone's attention. Visuals are always the most inviting and to have your own music match to it is really gonna be a winning combo there. So now that they have a better sense of what you do, in this case, custom music, now they're gonna feel way more uh, obliged to scroll down, especially on mobile. They just swipe up and boom, they get to meet who you are. So here we are, meet Steven Malin, and I just have some really evocative pictures here um, taken by a professional photographer. Highly recommend that you do the same. Um, it just has a, a different professional vibe than just taking some selfies because um, they have proper lighting and all that good stuff. And then I even have here another video if people want to watch it. My name it. is Steven Malin and I'm a music composer for media. I can take this growing up we're inspired by. So I just have a, a little about me video, uh, but ultimately it's kind of about my process and, and why people would want to work with me. Um, give a little bit of social proof here Social proof is everything when you're trying to, I don't even want to use the word sell, but whenever you're trying to show why someone should do something, social proof is everything. So what I mean by that is um, right here, I, I have social proof that I've written for hundreds of projects across a bunch of different media types, but look how short it is. It's literally two sentences and it doesn't need to be anything more than that. It's not my biography. You actually will not find a bio anywhere on my website because it's kind of wasted space. Um, you should have that somewhere in YouTube land or blog land or whatever, uh, but ultimately you just need to be very clear, very succinct. This is what Google is going to pull up is this first sentence here. That's how people will find you. And then boom, I kind of talk about more social proof of um, why, not even why um, they should hire me as a music composer, but, but how I've helped other people as a mentor for music composers. My, my work on Udemy as a course instructor, Facebook group, YouTube channel, um, et cetera. So there's just lots of social proof there. And then at the bottom of this about section, uh, my experience working with industry pros. Um, I don't like to call it name dropping, but if you've worked with high profile people, it's important that others see that you actually have some association with them. And anytime that you can, um, use their names in a context of, hey, I've actually worked with this person. It was a great experience. Look at what we did together. Um, names that other people will recognize immediately. That's a really helpful way um, just to get more credit behind your name. And so down here at the bottom, this is a very vital piece to include anytime you talk about yourself because you really don't need to be talking about yourself to promote yourself, but rather to connect with people. And so if you scroll down here, you will notice that I have a section about advocate for foster care and adoption. It's a bit more vulnerable. And so here's a picture of my wife and I even linked to her blog, which shares our hearts behind foster care and how that became our why that fuels our success. And so that's a huge part of our story as a family. And that's important, it separates us. It's something that, oh wow, that's different. Um, and it shows that we are humans first 
and people who work second. So always represent who you are when you're doing this. And then I have a very small music section where I've actually taken some of my favorite tracks from, for example, the epic genre. And you can kind of go down, get an orchestral demo, chiptune, emotional, indie, electronic, ambient, and it's just a, a fancy little section. Nothing huge, but it's an opportunity for people to hear more music that's just in case they didn't spend more than a minute or so in the demo reel section. They just wanted to jump right to music. People expect there to be something at the music section, but also you, you need to know who the person is before you're spending time listening to what they do. Um, down here, very vital section that every composer should have is a credit section. Even if you don't want to have links to everything, it's important that you at least show the diversity of what you do. If maybe you're just a video game composer, then make that very obvious from your, your demo reel and from your about section, and then just have your list of games. And Obviously, no one starts off with 100 credits, but when you're starting off, it's a great idea to... Um, just have a list, have a running list. Even if they're projects that are not completed, you can put TBD to be determined if you'd like that. And then scrolling down, another very vital section here is to have your clients. And the order here is very important because clients are there to showcase uh, what you do, but also your, their experience with you. Because it's very important that other clients are vetting for you and they have kind things to say about the working process with you. And this is why having a website is so vital because you, there's no other place to really put this. Um, and it's where people expect to have those testimonials, so to speak. So we take a look at the clients page. Just have, I just picked eight clients that I tend to work with more often than not and have higher profiles. I've worked with more, more than eight clients, but it's just a very clean representation of the types of people I work with which is commercial music, trailer music, um, kind of social humanitarian music and, and projects and films, um, all the way down to more the video game side here. So it's just kind of a well-rounded showcase of what I do. And then you should always have something free on your website, something that, um, for lack of a better word, lures people in, but ultimately you're adding value to them by giving them something for free they are subscribing to your e email list, which now gives you, well, really the perfect little bundle of people that you can reach out to when you have paid products to share. And so here I am working on writing a book right now, Six Figure Music Composer, and here people get 16 free pages from the ebook. And just by putting their, their name and email address, they can subscribe and then they'll be notified when the full book is released. And so that's already a kind of a pocket of potential clients down the road. And that's a very valuable resource just to see how many people are also coming to my website and um, subscribing to that. And then right there, contact that we talked about at the beginning. And if that is all that people get to experience on my website, so be it. I have at the bottom, my social links, pretty identifiable, IMDB, Instagram, YouTube, SoundCloud, podcast, um, iTunes, and Spotify. And then just the very bottom, my email address. And like I said, if, if that's all that people ever saw from my website, that should be enough. However, I do have this entire section over here, the more section where I have a blog as part of my website, podcast episodes, courses where people can license their music. I have um, the game Music Treasury, which is a game music pack on Unreal and Unity asset stores. Uh, a link to Bandcamp where I have some original soundtracks, my video game music arrangements, which are on Spotify, I have several albums there, the Sonic Storytellers Facebook group, and YouTube. So obviously this is a lot, and I don't expect other composers to have this much to showcase because most composers aren't doing that many things at the same time, and that's fine. In fact, it's probably better to be extra specific if all you do is video games or all you do is film, then make sure people know that 
and you are at least giving the basic presentation of who you are, what you do, who you've worked with, what nice things people have to say about you, and how people can get in contact to continue um, the conversation. And you'll notice that I don't have a store on here. Some composers do because they have valuable products that are best sold from their website. And I've toyed around with that in the past, but I've learned that the 3% commission that, for example, SoundDrop, so through Spotify soundtracks um, and through streaming and, and iTunes and Amazon, the 3% or the 10% commission that they get for hosting those items, I would much rather them host that than me having to pay squarespace.com um, the extra 20 bucks a month or whatever it is to host all of that data myself and to host all the, the purchase orders and the, the emails and all the items that come with that. So whenever you have your own storefront, you better be committed for the long haul because I've, I've done storefronts in the past either from free music or from album sales or through course sales. And I've, I've done a little bit of experimentation in, in all the things that I sell. I've learned that someone else is probably doing it better. Um, for example, Udemy, which is a, a course website. Um, they're gonna market my courses better than I can. They're gonna reach a bigger audience than I can and the, the small cut that they get I will still make more money and have more time on my hands to make more products for other websites, whatever the case is, to not have a dedicated storefront. But I've also seen composers have successful storefronts where they only sell everything that they make, such as library music or royalty free music, um, anything of that nature, or courses directly from their websites. It's super controlled, they can control their own pricing, they can control all that. Uh, it just takes a lot more work and you almost have to hire an assistant or two just to manage that and all of the communications involved. Um, and so from my perspective, it has not been a good return on investment for the time, the amount of work it takes to, to do that. So in a nutshell, this is what a website should look like. Um, it should represent who you are and connect people to how you can add more value to them. So I do think every composer needs a website. I also believe that every composer should be on social media, very active on social media on a daily basis. They should be on YouTube, they should be on Instagram, they should be on Facebook. Each of these platforms is different in the way that uh, material is shared. So you should be on there every single day doing something. And that is how you can build your audience up. And ultimately all of those platforms are gonna funnel down to your website so that you can connect people to exactly the solution that they need. So to recap, you should always put yourself in the mind of your potential client. That as soon as they visit your website, is your website designed in a way that each item is going to provide the solution that they are seeking? Does your website provide an easy access for them to get in contact with you to solve their problem or easy access to the product that will solve their problem or the video or whatever resource you're providing to add value to them. If this video was helpful, hit that like button and share this video with another composer friend who could really take the advice and benefit from having their website rehauled or created for the first time. Hit that subscribe button and be notified of all future music business videos like this and hit that playlist button if you want to check out the other 25 plus music business videos that have come before this one. I'm sure you'll learn something. Thanks guys. See you next time.